Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you today. It's really a pleasure to have you. I am glad that you're fine, live and kicking. I hope you had a good Friday evening. So I look forward to having you around. It's always a pleasure to have you. So my name is Jonan Kandwanaho, and I'm the CEO and founder of Jonaki Holdings Limited. And at Jonaki Holdings Limited, we give credit. We offer loans, affordable, very fast, and very integral. And what makes us different from any other financial institutions is that we do it faster. We do it faster because we assume that by the time you come to us and you need money, you actually need it. It's not a joke, you need the money. So you can always check, check us out on our website at www.janakiholdings.com. And then um, we usually have our live stream every Friday talk about business. And every talk that we make is put on my YouTube channel, Jonan Kandwanaho. So just go to YouTube, type Jonan Kandwanaho, and you will see a number of videos that we've done. And the journey that I've walked with a few of you, especially in the industry of finances, that is money lending, financial institutions, and all that industry. Yeah, so check us out and you can subscribe uh, so that every time a video is posted, then you are in the know, you're kept in the loop. Great. So I'll go straight to today's discussion or today's topic, uh, which is focusing in money lending. Uh, you see, one thing I've already shared is that I could be highlighting something on money lending, but it could also apply in any other business. It could apply in your boutique, it could apply in your real estate, it could apply in any other area, in any other industry. So it's not a must that whoever is watching should actually go and do money lending business, but rather apply a few principles or concepts or ideas in their businesses and they will shine and you will shine. So it's only a must that you have to have a money lending business. Thing. So we, let's, go, let's get at it. Focusing in money lending. So in money lending industry, sometimes when you've uh, a bit grown, you know, when you're starting, irrespective of the level you're at, you have little money. Usually, the demand for money is higher than what you usually have. I do not know about you, but it's a challenge that we actually faced at Janaki Holdings Limited. You realize that you have the demand for money, and yet you do not have enough money to satisfy the demand. And I'll go right ahead and explain why that happens. That happens because, you see, you've not established systems usually at the start. So meaning that you don't have a filter of whom you're going to serve and whom you're not going to serve. So almost everyone that you look at, almost everyone that knocks at your door, almost everyone who comes to your office, you think you're, going, you're meant to serve them. You think it's a must that you actually serve them. It's not a must. So you actually have to have the, the audacity to say no to some of the clients. But until you have a reason as to why you're saying a no, your no has to be justified. Or else you say yes all through. And you see, when you say yes all through, the end result is that you'll have a huge demand, hyped up demand, than the supply that you can make. And the money that you need to supply or to give to those, those, those clients is in short supply. You don't have a, a hole where you'll be picking from that money and, and giving it out. So what happens is that you're going to look for sources of other money. And sources you'll get, at least if you're serious. Uh, if you get the sources and you don't know how this money is going, are going to be recovered, it's a challenge. Uh, and it's usually a challenge for the starters. You know, you're starting, you don't have the filters yet, you still uh, don't have the systems in place. You cannot have any step that you can use to sieve out the right client or wrong client. So meaning that you don't have a filter. So whoever comes, you want to serve them. You want to serve them. Anytime you want to serve them. It's a big challenge. So you know what, what, what happens is that you get money from somewhere, whether it's circle or 
investment club or family members or colleagues or even go for a loan in a bank. I have, I've had a few guys that I mentor and they tell you, you know what, Jonan, I got a loan from the bank and lent out the money. It didn't come through. You know why it didn't come back? It's because you didn't look at the money coming back before you, you dispatched it. A loan is bad at the point of dispatch. A loan is, ba is bad at the point when you're dispensing it, when you're giving it out. It's not at the point of collection. That's wrong. It's at the point of dispatch. So meaning that if you don't do your homework properly, if you don't do your systems properly, if you don't do, work on your filters properly, you have a challenge. You have bad loans at the start, at the dispatch of the loans. You very well know that the person doesn't have a collateral, so how else do you expect to, to recover from them? So someone has come for a loan of 50 million, and he has not given a collateral. So in, in, in the case of a person defaulting, how do you expect to recover that money? It means that the person already defaulted at the point of dispatching that money. Why? Because it doesn't have a collateral. You get it? So meaning that you might actually not grow. All you're looking at is how many people have I given money? But how many people are you going to recover from? How many people are you going to collect from? Is another question. So you have to look at the collection before you actually dispatch the loan. So meaning that wherever you're at, whichever level you're at, you have to have enough filters to know which clients you can actually serve with at least 80 or 90 percent assurance that they will pay back than defaulting. So you need to, to be stringent to the system. So if you're at point zero, you need to step up to point one. If you're at point one, go to point two, and that's what we call growth. Now, this problem that I'm, I'm going to share with you in this discussion mostly happens to when you've had your systems in place, to when you've uh, gleaned your capital enough, to when you've progressively grown. You see, when you've grown is that you reach a moment and client has come and you can afford to say no because of ABCD, because you have two bounce checks on your, st on your bank statement, for example. What assurance will I have that if you give me this check without a collateral, it will not bounce and I have to look you up. If you had the audacity to give these other guys, two of them or three of them, a bounce check and they bounce on your statement, what assurance do I have that mine will not bounce and then we'll have to go back and forth? Now, courts of the law, you know, it's a, it's a crime, yes, it's a criminal matter, but, and you know, I'm not interested in the criminal. I'm not interested in the, in the crime of its sense, but rather the recovery. And I also would like to have as few clashes with the clients as possible. I shouldn't clash with any client. So, so that, that's at least our, our why, that's our wish. But eventually you clash with a few, one or two. But I wouldn't, watch, we to, uh, I wouldn't want to, to clash with any. But if it comes, then you, so be it. So, so as you're saving, you get to afford to say no. Because you have a bounce check on your statement, on your bank statement, we are saying no. And that explains some of you who are still using check leaves as collateral. That if someone defaulted, are you, you're going to bank that check leave, it will bounce, and then you'll be in the courts of the law. And then you will arrest this person, he bribes the police, back and forth. You won't recover the money, you're instead spending more. And you see, if a client has gone through such an experience, definitely he will not give you a referral. And in my other talk, which you look up on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, Jonan Kanwanaho, I shared that our businesses thrive most through word of mouth. Because I've done a good service to maybe Arnold, or I've, I've given a good service to Seth or Myers, he goes right ahead to refer me to someone else. So meaning that if I clash with as many clients, I will not get any referrals. And you know that has a trickle-down effect to my growth. So, when you have established that and your saving systems are a little robust, you tend to have some cash with you. Meaning that you have a lot of cash than the cash that you actually give out. Meaning that you have to put in a lot of money as well to do the, some bit of marketing so that you can have a huge exposure. Exposure to several clients and out of that, out of 500 clients that will look at your Facebook page or YouTube page or social medias, out of the 500, at least you know that 100 of them will come through, or 50 of them will come through, or even 200 of them will come through, and out of the 200, after your saving process, you'll end up with about 100. 
So that's the thing, that's the logic. So when you've grown to that level, of which I assure you that if you don't put systems in place, you might not grow to, those, to, to such a level. As a matter of fact, if God does not help, if God does not put his hand, you'll get out of business. I'm not predicting doom, but you'll get out of business anytime soon. If you say yes to everyone, you want to serve everyone who comes for money, you'll have a clear process through which you can actually be based on and say no, you're going to get out of business. I assure you. So if you don't get out of business, you grow. So when you grow, you'll come to have some bit of liquidity. You'll have, you'll have some bit of money on your account. And it's not that you're isolated from any other challenges. Now I'm telling you the challenge, what informed today's topic, focusing in money learning is that even when you have amount of money on your account, you tend to get tempted. You see, you look at these 500 million that you have on the account, or perhaps a billion things that you see on the account, and you start thinking, could I buy some land in uh, maybe in Naguru? But remember, you're not in the business of real estate. <laughs> you're not in the business of real estate. That money you have there is meant to be given out to clients. It's meant to be supporting other businesses. You're in the business of lending money. So you need to focus in lending money. You need to focus in your industry because your industry requires that you have liquidity. Now you can imagine if, if you have that, that 500 million and you pick it and pick 400 million and you go buy real estate and you get 10 clients who want 200 million or 100 million or 50 million based on your, on your maximum limit and you start fidgeting, applying for loans here and there. You cannot foreclose on that, you cannot sell that real estate in two, three days, in one week or one month. You get few people who can afford to buy that property of 100 million. And you see, when you invest your money, you want a property that you bought 400 million, you want to sell it at 500 million, or 450 perhaps. So here you are, you might even get expensive credit just because you, di you diverted money to something you had not anticipated or something you had not planned for. That's the point of the matter. That's, that's what has informed today's discussion. Is that you need to focus. If you're in lending money, what are you doing with with, with uh, produce. Hmm? You're there. <laughs> you know, they told me there's, there's some money in produce. Let me first cause them. I wash this money. I first invest in, in maize trading and I get it back. When the client comes through, I'll, I'll have it back. Why don't you focus? If you're lending money, if you're focusing on lending money, what are you doing with boutiques? Yes, it's good to divest, but you, you have to divest, or you have to divest on program, on plan. Not randomly, not haphazardly. You're going to knock. You're going to pick your money and put it in a business, and it will crash on you. It will crash hands down, and you lose the money. Even if you don't lose the money, that's what, that's just diverting your focus. It is dividing you apart. You're not going to grow. If you turn apart, you're not going to grow. So why don't you focus on your industry? Why don't you focus on your business? Why don't you focus? Irrespective of the temptations, because when you have money on your account, it's true, it's a fact that you'll get tempted. It is a fact that you'll get tempted. I won't lie to you. That's when you're going to see some deals. That's when you're going to see a Mercedes-Benz G-Class being sold at, at, at maybe 50 million. And you'll better have this money on the account. Can I, can I buy this G-Class? I've always dreamt of this G-Class. I've always dreamt of this Range Rover. Can I just pick this man and... Boss, could you focus? Because if you don't focus, you'll get torn apart. You'll want to buy that car and resell it at a higher price. And unfortunately, you might not get the buyer who'll give you the money that you want. Some of the things, when you buy them, they start depreciating. I'll give you an example. If you bought your car from a bond at 50 million now, few minutes after that, moving out of that bond, after having that number plate, the thing might even cut by over 30 or 40 percent. A car that you bought 50 million, if you go to resell it, the best person can give you 30 million. So you can imagine, if you pick money from your business, just because you're seeing liquidity on the account, you've already lost by 20 million in a second. Note that we shouldn't have these good things. Note that we shouldn't have uh, these great cars or nice cars or fancy cars. Have it on plan. Know that, you know, from my business, I'm earning 5 million per month or 10 million per month as a salary. 
So if I pick, if I plan in five months and I reduce my expenditure, I'll have saved 50 million and I can afford a G class that I've always dreamt of. Buy something on plan. Not on anxiety, not on intuition, not on hearsay, not on excitement. And then after you start regretting. So, so what I've, I've come to tell you today is that focus. My brother, my sister, focus. Focus and that's when you're going to grow your business. That's when you're going to... And you see this speaks to paying yourself a salary because sometimes you stretch too much. You think you're making money, you think, you know, I'm after business, you stretch yourself. Listen, that, that you even want to, to dodge lunch, skip lunch or skip something or skip a cloth because you're working hard. I've had a few guys I meant, I said, pay yourself a salary because you also have needs that you have to meet. You have airtime that you have to buy. You have data that you have to buy. So pay yourself salary. Formalize your business. Know that in a month, I'm making five million from my business. Out of the five million, I'm paying myself one million or two million. Don't be guilty. Pay yourself a salary. That's when you're not going to get tempted to actually pick that 500,000 to go and buy a suit. That's when you're not going to be tempted to pick that one million to go and buy an iPhone. So pay yourself a salary and work within that range. So you can know that business is growing and company money is not going to be misused. You're insulated from that. But you see, you cannot insulate from that if you know you're straining yourself. So you're not paying yourself salary. What is the business for if it cannot pay for your salary? If it cannot facilitate you? If it cannot buy you some clothes? Then you had better close it because perhaps it's not profitable. Perhaps it's not making any money. Or if, you, if it will make money and you've not been touching the money, now is the time that you touch it. Pay yourself a salary so because you have needs that you have to meet. You have needs that you have to look at. So as we go back to today's topic, focusing in money lending. Even when you have accumulated that money, focus. If you're to invest in real estate, invest on plan. Know that you know what? I have a billion shillings. Out of this one billion, my loan, my loan limit is maybe 30 million or 20 million. So it will take me 100 clients to apply for this money in one day to be stretched to the limit. So after computing that, you say, you know what? How about I invest this 500, 500 million in real estate? And that's when you invest on plan. And when you invest in real estate, you start computing the return on investment. You divest when you, you're on plan. And when you have enough liquidity that it's quite unlikely that 100 clients will come up in one day and they have all the requirements, the collateral that they need, that, that you actually need, and then they qualify for a loan and then you have to look for money to dispatch. So when you look at that unlikeliness, then, then you can base on that to divest part of the money to invest in some other area. But not haphazardly, not out of excitement. You know there's land in Nalia, it is a hot cake, someone is stuck. Do, 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 do. Those, those words will always come, come through, especially if they know that you have money. They will come through to you, especially when they know that you have liquidity. Someone will bring deals, deals are going to come. And if you've been saving enough, if you have processes in place, you'll have liquidity and deals will come. Very tempting deals. You have a billion shins on your account or 500 million and a deal comes, it requires maybe 200 million. You'll be tempted, but you need to remember this video and know that, you know what? I heard from Jonan that I need to focus. Focus. If you to invest, invest on a plan. Know that, you know, I have this 200 million year marked for this particular venture. So if you start looking out for deals or businesses in the bracket of that range, so that you don't expose yourself, so that you can not easily get out of business. So that's my, my gist, and I hope I've driven my point home. I hope you'll go and rethink how you've been, if you've been doing your things haphazardly, it's now time to go and rethink how you've been doing it. Go and rethink, go and focus, and that's when you're going to grow. Even when you've grown and accumulated some money, invest on a plan. And that's why I've always emphasized in one of my videos. Look them up on Jonan Kandwanaho, YouTube. I'm looking for a mentor, because when you're about to do something, that's when a mentor tells you, you know what, get in line. Get organized, get in line. Please, Adam, please rethink that procedure, go back. Yes, of course, a mentor will advise you, but it's upon, it's, it's upon you to implement what he has advised or not. And remember that 
a mentor has walked the journey that you're walking, he's actually way ahead of you in the industry that you're playing in. And that's why in my video on mentorship, I advise that you get someone who is doing what you're doing. The only difference is that he's doing it at a higher scale, at a higher level, that you actually envy to reach that level. So if he advises you something, you take his advice serious. If you don't, you'll get burned. Your hands will get burned. You might even, if not by God's grace, you can even get out of business. So that's why I advise that you get someone to burn a bit you, hit you here and there, and put you in line. Don't get excited when you have money on the account. If it's for business, if you're lending money, focus, keep in line, keep in line. Tozunga zunga, keep in line. And even if you, you want to kuzunga zunga, you kuzunga zunga on a plan. Have the plan in place. I know that you know what? This money I can afford to invest in real estate. Part of this money I can afford to buy A, B, C, D. But don't fidget, don't jump around. Don't jump around different businesses. Focus, focus, and focus. If you focus, it's only then that you're going to grow. And it's only then that you're going to get uh, excited that you're actually progressing. And that's when you're going to see the results. I thank you so much for your time, for tuning in today. It was nice having you around. Um, it's always a pleasure to have you. So every Friday, tune in from 5.30 uh, to um, 6. It will be always a pleasure. And check out my YouTube channel. Click that subscription button. It's free of charge. They don't charge you. <laughs> and also like the, the, the channel and give us feedback. I'll be glad to see your feedback. And if you want any service, feel free. I mentor some few guys, of course, at a fee. I also coach a few guys. I, I look forward to working the journey with you. And uh, I always tell you that let's meet at the top. Because I have the assurance that if you do all that I share, or even implement 50% of what I share, we shall definitely meet at the top. Because at the top, you'll get there. Cheers, have a great Friday, enjoy the rest of the weekend, God richly bless you. I speak a blessing over you, I speak a blessing over your life, I speak a blessing over your business, may the Lord bless the works of your hands, may you go out there and serve the public, serve the community, because you're not serving yourself, you're serving the community. If you're issuing money or you're giving loans and you're giving it yourself, before you know it, you're going to get out of business, because you're using the money to buy something else. You're not giving out money to clients. Otherwise, you're serving the clients, you're giving money to clients, you're not serving you. And you know you're employing people. Lots of families are depending, are depending on you, people are depending on, your, on the salaries you're giving them, so don't get out of business, please. If you're about to give up, if you're about to close shop, don't get out of business. Think of, think of that stuff that you're paying salary, think of, of the dependence that they have, think of the very things that you can actually accomplish and implement one or two things and get going and grow and have branches. So may the Lord guide you and may the Lord uh, help you and uh, let's meet at the top. Thank you, cheers and bye-bye.